Hello there again, guys, and welcome back to another paleontology and somewhat biology recap, where I will list most of the notable scientific discoveries made in the last year as they relate to extinct and extant flora and fauna, as well as make predictions about the discoveries of the coming year. Last time, we found out that 2015 held amazingly fascinating new creatures from dragons to terror birds to extinct human species. And, well, 2016 was also pretty eventful, with some very surprising and intriguing finds. First off, we got a lot of more conclusive answers to long-asked questions. The Tully monster was a bizarre and almost alien-looking organism that lived during the time of the Carboniferous. It possessed a cuttlefish-like fin structure at the end of its body, two long eye stalk like structures, and a long toothed proboscis. Its biology was so weird that for decades paleontologists had no idea if it should be classified as a mollusk, vertebrate, arthropod, or something entirely different. Scientists in 2016 were able to determine what exactly this unusual animal was related to by studying the blob-like structures at the end of its eye stalks. They were able to find that the blobs were pigmented color cells called melanosomes, the oldest preserved in the fossil record thus far. These pigment cells in what are now positively identified as eyes is a characteristic only found in vertebrates, meaning the Tully monster was a type of highly derived fish, most likely closest related to lampreys finally giving a clear answer to the animal after such a long mystery. Platabelodon, like Tully, was also a very bizarre creature, long known in the fossil record. The extinct elephant relative possessed a very strange shovel-like tooth structure that has been thought for almost an entire century to be used to dig up and scoop aquatic plants in its swampy habitat. Recent analyses reveal that Platabelodon used its teeth to break much harder surfaces like tree bark and branches, and was used less like a shovel and more like an axe. Over the past decade or so, microscopic analyses of feathers have allowed us to determine the colorations of many dinosaurs ranging from Microraptor, Yi Chi, Cynoceropteryx, and Antiornis, revealing to us almost exactly how these animals must have looked in the flesh. Well, scientists in 2016 were able to use the same methods to determine the colorations of another dinosaur distantly related to ceratopsids, Cetacosaurus. The studies revealed that Cetacosaurus possessed countershading of dark brown on the top parts of its body and lightish pink browns on the bottom parts of its body. These colorations would be helpful with camouflaging the dinosaur in its environment. Atapodentatus was a large seal-like marine reptile that lived during the time of the Triassic. When it was first discovered in 2014, the skull of the creature was reconstructed with a bizarre, zipper-like jaw structure that made it look like some sort of eldritch horror. Two additional specimens discovered in 2016 revealed that the 2014 specimen was badly damaged, and the actual animal possessed a less peculiar but still pretty weird hammer or vacuum-shaped jaw. A tapodentatus used this strange head shape to consume algae in the Triassic seabeds. Drapanosaurus is a quite weird reptile that I already did a paleo profile on a few months ago. Well, the monkey sloth lizard appeared back in the news as 2016 studies revealed something intriguing about its arm anatomy. They found that Drapanosaurus had an even stranger arm structure than any other tetrapod, with its old enough flattening out into a crescent-shaped disc and its wrist bones elongating to be longer than its radius. This outlandish arm allowed the massive claw of Drapanosaurus to be extremely powerful, which the creature used to dig up insects out of tree bark. The truly surprising thing about this discovery is that no other known tetrapod in all of Earth's history has modified their forelimb layout to such an extent. In addition to revisions and conclusions to previously known extinct animals, many awesome and outlandishly entirely new fossils were found in 2016 as well. Trioptychus was a Triassic reptile that was part of the Archaeosauriforms. Only known from a single skull, Tropticus is peculiar for a multitude of reasons. First of all, is a strange hole or pit that existed on the back of its skull. The pit has two hypotheses for its purpose, one being simply an area on the roof of the skull that never expanded and the surrounding skull areas expanded around it as the animal aged, and second, a less likely hypothesis, being that the pit is a penal eye or a third eye, something all tetrapods once had, but many including the archaeosauriforms lost. In addition to the strange pit, Trioptychus had a dome head that would be covered in keratin in life. The dome skull is extremely similar to that of the dinosaur group known as the Pachycephalosaurus. The only thing is, Trioptychus wasn't a dinosaur and was only a distant relative, meaning Trioptychus is an excellent example of convergent evolution. 
Lemosaurus was a theropod dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic. It possessed a toothless beak and a herbivorous appetite, with adults possessing a stomach full of stones to grind up plant matter. The strangest thing about the dinosaur is what it is closest related to. One might think this guy is a relative of the ostrich-like ornithomimosaurs, but scientists discovered Lemosaurus was actually closest related to the previously solely carnivorous ceratosaurs. A similar surprise of traditionally carnivorous theropods being revealed to be somewhat herbivorous continued with the discovery of the Japanese manoraptor, Pukyuvenator. The dromaeosaur-looking dinosaur possessed teeth that displayed it was at the very least somewhat omnivorous, likely eating nuts and seeds. Interestingly, the opposite was true for 2016 discoveries of members of traditionally herbivorous dinosaur groups possibly being carnivorous. Sauropodomorphs is the dinosaur clad that includes the long-necked herbivores known as the sauropods and the prosauropods such as platysaurs. The group is considered almost entirely plant-eating, but a recent discovery has shown that some of the most primitive sauropodomorphs were actually carnivores, and likely all sauropodomorphs, even the ancestors of Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus, were once meat-eaters. Berea lestis was discovered in 2016 and likely represents one of, if not the most primitive members of Sauropodomorphia. Although superficially it might resemble a theropod dinosaur like Coelophysis, its anatomy reveals that it is in fact a primitive sauropodomorph, that unlike its kin, ate meat instead of vegetation. Lauangosaurus was a species of ankylosaur from China. In 2016, a new specimen was studied and the subsequent paper made some pretty crazy claims about the dinosaur after their research. The researchers claimed it was a semi-aquatic turtle mimic that feasted on fish, the first ever carnivorous Orniscian dinosaur, and a swimming one at that. Like a dinosaur version of a snapping turtle, the scientists discovered the vertebrae of the animal was not fused and the belly of the animal was covered in armor. This is very reminiscent of the anatomy of marine animals, particularly turtles. The additional carnivorous claim was made on the basis that fish remains were discovered in the animal's belly. At first, this guy seemed to have met my prediction made in last year's video saying that we might find a carnivorous Orniscian dinosaur in 2016. Alright, next, maybe a fully carnivorous Orniscian. Heck, we found plant-eating theropods with Chilisaurus and Therizinosaurus. Maybe we'll have a fully carnivorous Hadrosaur. And I would have been proven to be a psychic too if it wasn't for skeptical inquiry. Damn you, science. Many paleontologists and members of the paleo community were very skeptical of the claims made by the research team. A few things were fishy, no pun intended. The paper, first of all, wasn't peer-reviewed, so thus errors might be present in the current state of the paper. It is possible that the known specimens are juveniles of the species and do not represent fully mature adults. The fish the animal had supposedly ate are found all throughout the ribcage and not necessarily in the gut. The main problem is the authors of the paper explain the reasoning for the fish-eating behavior not too well. Further analysis on the teeth would probably be necessary before such an extraordinary claim could be made. Although the thought that an ankylosaur snapping turtle existed was pretty cool, and it could have been a psychic, the evidence of this being true is a bit dodgy, and before we can say it is true, future studies are necessary. This also was the Amber Year, with several revolutionary and surprising discoveries made in regard to extinct animals being trapped in fossilized tree sap, almost perfectly preserved and unchanged since the day they died. First up was a strange insect trapped in a nugget of amber. Ceratomerex, or unicorn ant, was a species of ant that lived during the Cretaceous. It possessed a crazy tusk-like trap jaw which was likely used for defense against predators or to stun prey in a rapid opening of the mouth parts. It gets its name from a truly outlandish horn in the center of its head that was covered in hairs which the scientists theorized was used to transport larvae. Several lizards were also found embodied in a sticky coffin this year. These 99 million year old fossils preserve these dinosaur aged geckos and chameleons so well that the toe pads, claws, and even scales are quite easily visible. Twelve well preserved lizard specimens were discovered, some of them representing the oldest and most basal ancestors of their modern relatives. They are probably some of the best preserved missing links ever discovered, as the Mesozoic chameleon and gecko fossils gave scientists a great understanding of how these animals evolved and when traits showed up in the fossil record. The prehistoric geckos, for example, possess the sticky toe pads present of modern geckos, suggesting they evolved in the lizards much earlier than 99 million years ago. The basal chameleon trapped in the amber possesses the iconic projectile tongue of modern chameleons, but not the distinct body shape and toe structure of modern ones. Probably the biggest discoveries of the year were the two dinosaur feathers trapped in amber. 
At the same 99 million year old formation as the lizards and the ants, two amazing amber discoveries will forever change what we know about dinosaur skin coverings with likely the best preserved remains of a non-avian dinosaur ever. In 2015, a piece of amber no bigger than a rubber eraser was sold by a salesman. The salesman said trapped in the amber was a few ants and a fluffy structure that he believed was a plant. It was later found that the fluffy thing was actually a dinosaur tail segment that was covered in poofy, soft, and non-aerodynamic feathers. Eight vertebrae with soft tissue and skin covering was also preserved. The specimen represents a truly wonderful find that no one expected. The dinosaur in question was likely a juvenile no bigger than a sparrow and was a close relative to the very bird-like raptors. An additional find was an almost entire wing of an extinct bird species that was trapped in amber. The feathers were also extremely well preserved and the bird still retained the very saurian claws that many modern birds lack. This specimen was likely no bigger than a hummingbird. The last scientific discovery of 2016 that I would like to highlight surprisingly is not a paleontological one. Greenland sharks are a species of huge shark that live in the Arctic regions of the North Atlantic. A 2016 study measuring the radioactive decay of nuclear bomb fallout as they relate to the crystalline proteins in the eye lenses of sharks allowed scientists to determine many of these sharks' as age. Yes, they used nukes to find the age of Arctic sharks. How much cooler could this study sound? The study revealed that the Greenland sharks have the longest lifespan of any known vertebrate. Of the oldest specimens, they have an age range of a minimum of 272 to a maximum of 512 years old. Holy crap, that is possibly older than Ming. The study also concluded that the sharks reach sexual maturity at around 150 years old. This crazy find shows us that some of these sharks could have seen everything from the Revolutionary War, World War II, and the fall of the Aztec Empire. That's how old some of these sharks could be. 2016, scientifically speaking, was a blast, with some great surprises and very interesting answers to unsolved questions. Although none, or maybe one of my predictions became true, it was still pretty great, and hopefully 2017 will continue that. My predictions for next year are that we will find a species of extinct maybe fish with a weird jaw or fin structure, that we will find a transitional form between more reptile-like synapsids and mammals, and lastly, that we will find a coloration of some extinct animal. So let's just see what 2017 has in store and if next year I will truly be proven as a magician. Thanks for watching and um, see you next time. I really want to thank Studio 252 Million Years for helping me make this video by providing amazing artwork for everybody to see. These artists on this website are dedicated to providing us with accurate illustrations of extinct flora and fauna, and also supply t-shirts, like mugs and paintings and you know all sorts of great stuff on their on their website for you to buy so please just check them out and you know thanks for watching